This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are Navigating the Journey. Navigating the Journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices that we want in our lives and to assist people to talk about their wishes. It's time to transform our culture so we shift from not talking about it to talking about it. It's time to share the way we want to live our lives. It's time to communicate about the kind of care we want and what we don't want. We believe that the place for this to begin is not in the intensive care, but together we can explore various paths in life. Together we can make these difficult conversations easier. Together we can make sure our own wishes and those of our loved ones are expressed and respected. So if you're ready to join us, we ask, navigate the journey. Today, we are going to navigate the journey that is here and now, with us right now. And we have my dear friend, and of course you know, I only ask dear friends, <laughs> my dear friend, Josh Frost, to talk about a new, at least it's new to me, Pono Hawaii Initiative. Right. Now that sounds like something we should talk about, right? Sure, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. In making choices in life, initiative, pono meaning really good. Yeah. Yeah. And in Hawaii, we want these choices. So tell us, Josh, what is Pono Hawaii Initiative? Pono Hawaii Initiative is a, a political nonprofit. So we do lobbying and we do campaigning. Um, it's sort of a sister although not immediately related to uh, Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action, which I, I'm guessing a lot of your watchers know about. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> um, so it was founded by myself and Gary Hooser um, earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And the, the idea being that, you know, at, at the state level and at the county levels, we are frustrated with the slow pace at which things are moving, advancing, progressing. Um, and Hoppe, sort of took that uh, and, and really pushed out on issues, but because they're uh, a C3, they're an educational nonprofit, they can't do the lobbying okay, efforts right. and, and uh, the campaign now efforts. Now, what, what is HAPA? HAPA is the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action. Oh. It's, yeah, okay. that's a, a, a C3. They've, uh, most famous for um, pushing on uh, pesticide disclosure, buffer zones, GMOs, stuff like that. Uh -huh. um, but they're a fantastic progressive organization and they've really helped to transform um, and bring progressives together across the state of Hawaii. Pono Hawaii Initiative um, isn't really a spin-off, but is is trying to pick up the work that Pono Hawaii can't do. So you're a C4, years. so you can lobby. So we can lobby. That's our primary uh, mission, mm -hmm. uh, is to, to work on issues, uh, $15 minimum wage, uh, paid family leave insurance, uh, disclosures, uh, you know, housing issues, homelessness issues. Uh, and our favorite, of course, is medical aid and dying. Yes, medical aid and dying. Uh, we also support uh, uh, decriminalization of uh, marijuana and uh, criminal justice reform. I mean, the list of, of issues that we'd support from a progressive perspective is uh, lengthy. <laughs> My goodness, how do yeah. you get to all of that? Well, so what we're doing, I mean, so we need to prioritize, and, right. and the organization officially formed uh, in April of this year. So mm -hmm. the board is still relatively small. Uh, there's three of us, four of us here on Oahu. Uh, we just added uh, a board member from the Big Island, and we just added a board member from uh, Maui. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we're still trying to put some of the pieces together, and, and in the meantime, I've been um, working on and trying to coordinate uh, efforts on the Fight for 15. Um, I'm also working uh, closely with the uh, family leave uh, insurance folks right. to try and get a, a, a bill finally passed next year. So, you know, we're still looking at a legislative agenda. So, yeah, and we're right at the opening of the legislature. Yeah, so um, do you have bills that you have already targeted that you, you know 
are going to show up or do you help in writing the bill? Do you, at what point do you come on board with a bill? Well, so it sort of depends. So um, on the minimum wage, you know, I definitely am working, uh, helping draft um, actually a couple different pieces of legislation for minimum wage related uh, issues. Now, um, yes, let me go back a few years. Okay. When we spent two years, I did anyway, two years every day lobbying for minimum wage. Yes. And we thought we had a good bill until the Chamber of Commerce showed up. <laughs> the Chamber of Commerce does not, I think, I, I, I won't speak for them, if I, I, if I had to guess, they would be for abolishing the minimum wage altogether. Yes. Right, so any attempt to increase it, they are our main opposition. And the uh, restaurant association yes. is the other. Well, the, the restaurant association wasn't too bad, but I remember at when we thought we had a good bill, and we all showed up, and right. it looked like it, and then the director of the Chamber of Commerce sits at the table and she says, can we talk? <laughs> and then when they came back, we didn't have a good bill. Well, so, the, uh, let me say this. So, so this is was, this was 2014, yeah. um, and a lot of ways, the circumstances then um, are mirrored next year, right? We have a congressional race, we have a gubernatorial race, um, and so a lot of the circumstances are the same. In 2014 uh, and 13, we pushed, I believe we were pushing for a, a $12 minimum wage, yeah. elimination of the tip credit, and a CPI chain so that future minimum wage increases were automatic. Right. What we got was 1010 over four years. Yes. Um, sorry, it wasn't 2004. Yeah, 2014. 2014. So mm -hmm. uh, 1010 over four years, they changed, reduced sort of the tip credit um, and no CPI chain. And at the time, um, I admit to being fairly frustrated, but um, a good friend of mine reminded me that these people hadn't received raises in a very long time. And anything that we could get. Yes. Was better than nothing. But, yeah, well, that was Which what I true. was told. Yeah. Said, okay. Calm and, and, down, Marcia. Yeah, so take what you can get. Yeah. Right. We've got to remember that the, the perfect can't be the enemy yes. of the good. Yes. Right. And I, um, I often have to remind myself, or people have to remind me, yes. <laughs> that uh, sometimes we have to compromise. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, in a democratic society, it's yep. what we do. Well, one person did tell me, because I said that in their organization, and they are a nonprofit organization, that the raise, pay, pay raise was killing them. They said they had to let go of some people because they just didn't have the money. Yeah, so. so um, I had to look at it, okay, well, you well, know, this some. Is, this, is this, this is what's sort of sad and frustrating yeah. is, is a lot of our allies um, on progressive issues are nonprofits. They're small, they're funded by donations, and even though they support right. minimum wage, sadly, they're in a situation where they don't pay their employees minimum yeah. wage. And, and, you know, so it gets to be a hard thing. One of the other things that we're going to be looking at is, is eliminating the differential for minimum wage for people who are uh, disabled. Right now, they That's get... That's terrible. Right. That and is this terrible. is news to me. Like, just in the last few months... Really? They came, someone uh, no, came, came to me and said... Well, that came up in 14, now the difference. I don't, I don't remember that. But so... Uh, and it's the same sort of thing. So good organizations um, like uh, uh, well, Alana Kila or yes. Goodwill, these are good organizations that help people, but they're going to oppose an yes. increase in, in the differential. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, but, in but other you, things, they'd be our allies. Like Walmart, for instance. Uh, the, the amount of money they make, and they pay their, and they have all plethora of, yeah. of uh, disabled people. I mean, they really employ yeah. a lot of them. Right. And they're and, also not, they're not big fans of increasing the minimum wage. And then, yeah, they're, they're so. part of the problem. They are, right. Yes. So in this, so in the, so. But they can afford to pay these people. Yes. And they don't. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. And, and, and the fear is, is, is or at least the argument that, that folks like Goodwill and others would make is, is if, you know, we give these people purpose and, and you know, community and, and they come and do work for us. But my response would be, was their work less valuable than yes, right. someone else's work who you'd pay minimum wage? Like, mm -hmm. why is their work less, less. valuable? And, and the big issue 
Hawaii leads the nation in homelessness. And my thought on that is because you're paying $10 an hour and your rent is $1,800 a month. Yeah. How do you, how did, that's why we have so many homeless people. That well, it's one of right the reasons, yeah. right? I think I think the 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 housing shortage and the homelessness issue uh, is complex, and and I do believe that uh, a low minimum wage contributes it does. to to our high rate of, of homelessness. But I don't think raising the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour is going to eliminate homelessness That's not. in Hawaii, right? So no, but we have it, to address. We have to look at that because the powers that be tell us, oh, these people are drug addicts. They're yeah. all this. Crap, they yeah. do not address the big issue is the cost of living and the right. and what we are paying people. Well, and so these yeah. are these are these, one you know, this is uh these are symptoms of a larger problem and, and it, they're all problems that uh Pono Hawaii is is trying to address in a larger sort of economic justice, you know, platform. Of course. Right. And and paid family leave or yeah, you know, paid leave insurance is, is a huge thing. People if they're sick, if their kids are sick. They won't take time off because either they don't have it or they don't get paid enough and can't uh, afford to take time off. Right. right? And, and so a lot of the issues having to deal with, with uh, you know, cost of living and housing have to do with we need to do a better job of allowing people in Hawaii to support themselves and their family. How can we continue to say this is the Aloha State when it's very criminal, it's right. very mean? Right. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, I mean, in a lot of, it's, a lot of it's really hard to navigate. It right? is. Um, and, and homelessness is just, is just one component. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you look at criminal justice uh, reform and, and what they're trying to do with uh, OCCC and, and uh, decriminalization, you know, the number of people who are in, in prison, either because they can't afford, in jail, because they, they can't afford jail, or mm -hmm. because they can't afford bail, um, you know, Sentences on on drug possession, um, you know, nonviolent criminals in uh, our justice system. It's, it's, it's just that, and that, it costs the state a lot of money. It does. That if they changed it, could be put towards other things. Yes. Right. If we if we just look at that, um, okay. So you got a youngster with one ounce of of marijuana, and he gets picked up, and now the whole system comes into play. So that's an right. expensive. Right. And Not they might us. get stuck in, in, in jail stuck. because they can't afford the bail, yep. right? So even before trial, even if they get released, right, or they, they plea down, they've still spent all this time in jail waiting for trial because they can't pay the yeah. $500 bail or whatever Whatever it is, it is. right? It's, we need to take a break. Oh, okay then. <laughs> okay. And we will be right back with Josh Foss and talking about all the ailments yeah. and how we can remedy some Absolutely. of them. Absolutely. Okay, we'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? And they told me they were making music. Welcome to Hawaii. This is Prince Dykes, your host of the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys each and every Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Don't forget to come by and check out some of the great information on stocks, investing, your money, all the other great stuff, and I'll be your host. See you too. Aloha, and we're back with my dear friend, Josh Frost, and it is Pono Hawaii Initiative. That's right. And its very name, Pono tells us a lot about the organization. So let's talk, we are coming up on midterm. Yes. Elections. All of the House of Representatives is up for re-election. Yes. And half of the Senate. Roughly, yeah. 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 As well as our congressional delegation. Yes. Both. And the governor. And, and the governor, governor and, and all yeah. those kind of people. Yeah. So let's talk about elections because that is at the heart of what happens. Right. All of those people in that square building 
would not be there if it wasn't for a low turnout. Yes. yes. Well, that's one of the reasons. Yes. 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 That's why they get reelected. Last year, we had of 51 members, we had 30 that ran unopposed. Yes. That's not good. So we're, let's talk about elections, what it is that you can do, what do you want our audience to do to see that this low turnout, I mean, it's okay to reelect some of these guys, Yeah. but it has to be a better way to do this than just not being just, you know, like it's your job for the rest of your life. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's low voter turnout is one component, right? And, and people running unopposed are, is another component. And, and depending on who you ask and for what reasons, people have chosen not to vote, right? Um, I think a lot of it has to do with just a feeling that it doesn't matter, right? The people get elected and then they do whatever they want for two years and then they come back and say nice things and, and sound nice and ask for money and then they go back and ignore working people. And, and so finding good progressive candidates to run against some of these people in the House and Senate, and even at the city council level, in the yes. county councils, um, finding good people um, who share our values um, and who are electable, right? I mean, it's one thing to be progressive, but if, uh, you know, if you don't present yourself in a professional way, if you can't speak professionally, if you can't appeal to people in, in a sort of professional way, then you're not going to get elected. And, and, you know, so it's really important to identify viable progressive candidates for, for elective office and then support them. Yes. And they, I personally, I think if the candidate, the old and the new, if they don't talk about the very issues we were talking about, homelessness, paid leave, uh, minimum wage, the things that go to the heart of who you are. Right. It's wonderful, you know, okay, so I am against the uh, carpet tone uh, that kills the Oh, leaves. the sunscreen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and, and, you know, I support that, but I have a roof over my head. Right. If we don't talk to the people who are on the edge, who right. about the things that, it, when, when we, on the way this morning, we see somebody sleeping on the sidewalk, you know, and if we don't talk about these right. things, how do we get, we, those are the people, the candidates that talk about, these are the ones we want to get elected. Right. Well, and, the, and we also have to, you know, I mean, that's absolutely right. And, and talking about issues that, that affect working people, people. and local people right. is really important. Now, um, some of them, you know, you know do get excited about um, hot button issues, right? Whether it's sunscreen or uh, pesticides or Mauna Kea, right? People are passionate about those things and they'll come out to vote based on those things. The, the problem is, 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 at least from my perspective, those are very sort of surface, right? Everyone can say, right? Everyone supports education, right? right. Everyone supports uh, renewable energy and clean environment. But what have? But those people who we continue to elect, what have they done, done. to, to That's prove exactly. it? Right? They want to support working people. What have they done? Right? right. They want to do something about hou housing and homelessness. What have they done? Right. That and that is the issue. Right. And so challenging them on those core issues and and holding them to account is critical. Yeah. You have been in office all of these years, and right. there was homelessness when you came in. There's homelessness now. What have you done in all those years? Right, right. That, and, and that has to be at the core of the challenger. Right, but they've got to be able to do it. I, I, I there was a um, an article or a column in Civil Beat, and um, some uh, someone had done a poll that showed something like. 45, 49 percent of people will support a candidate based on this, their sense of integrity, right? right? So it doesn't necessarily even have to be about issues. It's how do you come off, right? When I knock on your door, right. do I look friendly? Do I sound friendly? Do I listen to you? Do I, you know, answer your questions? And, and that's part of it, right? We need candidates who are going to listen to and respond to the issues in their community. And I think... Uh, to a large extent, the, the folks at the legislature haven't done that. They send money, right? They okay. do GIAs and things, and, and, um, but they're not, they're not working on the core issues that really 
troubling the state, right? And so Pono Hawaii, as we go forward, um, we will be, we'll be endorsing candidates, candidates that are, that are progressive, that are uh, you know, working on economic justice and social justice and environmental justice that are viable. Yes. Can they raise money, right? Do they have a professional campaign? Um, are they doing the work of, of door knocking and, and fundraising and, and reaching out to the community? Those people that we endorse, we're going to need volunteers. We're going to need you know, money for them and, and for, for Pono Hawaii to do the work that we do uh, in supporting them. And then we need everyone to get out and vote. Yes. So that's the issue. How yes. do we get people to turn out? And my thought is people will vote if there's something to vote for. Not against, but for. So how do we present the issues that you just talked about so that people want to vote for? Well, I think, um, again, in, in, in Hawaii, a lot of people will vote if they like you. Yes, of right? course. Well, so, so I think, I mean, what you're talking about is, is at least I think, is, is restoring faith in government. Right? People want to know that if they're voting, that their vote translates into action at, at, at the legislature, at the county councils, right? And, and that's not something that we can do in one cycle, right? But we need to be able to say, we're going to do A, B, and C. We're going to fight for A, B, and C. And even if we don't get them, we need to be able to show that our candidates are pushing hard on those issues. What, now, how do we get those that are already in office to realize, how do we get to them and say, look, you're, you're taking up space. We paid for you. We pay your salary. How do we get them to see that they're not doing the job? Well, and I, I would say they that... They protect each other. You know? Well, then this is, yeah. I mean, and, and having do been doing this for a while, yes. it's, it's, you, we need to put pressure on them, right? Yes. They, you, at the end of the day, they care about getting reelected. Yes. Right? So appealing to that. that. So um, some of, there's a few of us who sort of say, you know, we don't need to reelect. We don't need to kick out everyone at the legislature, right? We need to build power in a new progress, sort of a new left, right? And, and you know, in the House or in the Senate, when the leadership starts to see more and more progressives getting elected and standing up for the things they care about, they will have to respond. Right, because they'll see sort of a, a, a trend shift. So we don't necessarily, I mean, I think there are in the people in the building who would be supportive of our issues if it were sort of forced on them. And well, right? that's exactly. And so getting a handful of, of progressives elected to the, the House and a handful of progressives, I mean, in the Senate, we only need really three or four we only need, to yeah. really start to change you know, the environment in the Senate. In the House, it's maybe half a dozen, right? right? To really start, now we won't change leadership and we won't, you know, transform things overnight, but a solid core of a new progressive group of legislators will go a long way to waking up the people in the building and saying, oh, well, we better start paying attention, otherwise they're coming for me next. Yes. How do we let them know in January that by September or August, when the primary, yeah. that we are going to make sure that there's somebody, that we are going to look for somebody to run against you. How do we, how do we, I know that's kind of hard yeah, to yeah. say, but how do we let them know that there is this group, these people who have had enough? And. Well, and I, again, I, I you know, I don't want to, we don't want to make threats that we can't. Right. Make good on, right? So to say we're going to run someone against you. If, no, no, I meant if, we have to let them know that we are building. Uh, they know. Um, I mean, they, they, you know, the, the, the folks in the legislature, this is what they do, right? So they, they saw what happened in 2016, and, and, you know, a lot of the Democratic legislators were at the presidential preference poll in March of 16. They saw the turnout for Bernie for Sanders. Bernie, yes. They know that that. Those energy still exist. exists, still yes. in Hawaii, right? And, and, and from a broader perspective, the, the, the progressive energy that is, you know, it, that exists now in the state. I've been in Hawaii for like 15, 16 years, and I've never seen the level of organization for progressives, the, the sort of cross talk, the breaking down of silos. Um, minimum wage last year, 
Sierra Club was a huge supporter right. of the fight for 15 and for paid family leave. And, and they're an environmental progressive organization who's now supporting economic justice causes. And we want to support them and their issues. Of course. And so the, 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 the amount of activity that's going on, the legislators are aware of it. Right? There were a handful of people, progressives, who ran last year. Most of them didn't win. But they're running again. And the people at the legislature and at the counties, uh, county councils, they know. They're paying attention. And, and so what happens during the 2018 legislative uh, cycle is going to be really telling for what we think the outcome is going to be in, in the election. And, and whether we are successful or not at the legislature, and even if we don't win as many races in 2018 as we'd like or as we hope, okay. we're going to come back around. I mean, we're, gonna, we're building we're a building. movement. Yeah. Yes. We are, you know, uh, of course you're too young to know, but <laughs> that was the whole way that the modern day Democratic Party took years of building from the time the AJAs came back sure. and the end of the plantation system. It took years of building right. to be a force. Right. And so now one last thing, because time runs out. That's right. <laughs> uh, when, on the opening of the legislature, will your organization, will these people, the Bernie people, your organization, will they show up? Will there be some way to identify? Because there's huge crowds, you know, the crowds. Yeah, there, there, there will be there is some... Will they be identified so that the legislator, when they go to his office, they see how many people? Well, I, I, is there is some, there are, there are some, there's some discussion going on about uh, organizing sort of a progressive rally and different organizations are sort of having the conversation. At the moment, um, for better or for worse, Pono Hawaii doesn't have uh, the capacity to sort of help out. Yeah. Um, we will definitely try to turn our people out of um, course. And, and be supportive, but we don't necessarily, we won't show up in t-shirts, right? We, we, what's important is, is that that people, when they go in to talk to legislators, these are the things I care about, and what are you doing, right? They don't have to say, I'm from Pono Hawaii, or I'm from Sierra Club, or I'm from the Democratic Party. They need to say, I am a member in your district. What are you doing to help me and my family? Okay. Well, we are just about out of time. Tell us now the name of the organization, how they can reach you, how they can help, and okay. like so, so. So the organization is Pono Hawaii Initiative. Mm -hmm. um, we have a website, ponohawaiiinitiative.org, and it's all spelled out. It's a, it's a very long address. Uh, you can contact me at josh at ponohawaiiinitiative.org. Um, there's a sign-up page on the website if you want to get emails from us. Uh, if you want to support us financially, uh, there's a, a place to donate online, and, and that money goes uh, towards our efforts in supporting candidates, in building the organization, um, and in the efforts we'll be doing lobbying at the legislature uh, starting in January. Great. Okay. I thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Josh. Thank we you. will look forward, hopefully, because the legislature opens in this time slot, hopefully we can be there with the cameras, oh, yeah, and I hope excellent. so. Yeah, I yeah, hope yeah. So. that would be cool. It would be cool, yes. Thank you, Josh, yeah. as always. Thank it's you. a pleasure being with you. Absolutely. Aloha.